I started in industry in 20, uh, 2007 and, and hardly I had any idea about antibiotics. My first boss asked me what is an ESPL and I had no freaking idea what this thing is. And since that day, I have been eating, drinking, sleeping antibiotics. So yeah, I mean, the thing that you dread the most in your life, you have to face it, okay? Uh, so antibiotics, I know I have only half an hour today and I also have a hard stop. I have another meeting after that, but tomorrow is a much more liberal time I have with me. Uh, I guess I have 90 minutes. So let me start today. It's a very boring topic, very basics of antibiotics. So I thought let's warm up first, okay? And I know uh, it's very difficult to interact virtually, but uh, please feel free to answer some of these questions by making yourself unmute uh, within five to seven seconds, just keeping the time limits, uh, and then we can get started. Okay, so which of the following cephalosporins have very good pseudomonas coverage? A, B, C, D, E, more than one or not? Anyone? Which of the following cephalosporins have good pseudomonas coverage? So they are saying B and C. Uh, where they sit, they cannot really. Okay, sure. Oh so, ma'am, thank you. Thank you for facilitating. Yeah. Well, one, second, one second, one second, one second. You can put on your mics and speak so he can hear you. He can't see you, but he can do that, right? Okay. Okay, B yes. and C. So, let's see whether this is right or not. So, the correct answer is B, C, and D. Okay. So cefepime is a fourth generation cephalosporin, which is also anti-pseudomonal. So what's here to learn? No first and second generation cephalosporin covers pseudomonas. So your cephalexine, cefazolin, ceftrag, uh, first and second generation don't cover. Among third generation, there are only two which cover pseudomonas, ceftazidime and cefoparazone. Okay, your cefexime, cefpodoxime, they do not cover pseudomonas. And in fourth generation, there is cefepime and cefpyrome, which cover pseudomonas. Okay, fine. Next one. Which of the following drugs should not be used for an enterococcal infection? Enterococcus faecalis or faecium. Which one should not be used? Anyone? Any answers? D. D should not be used. I'm sorry, D is one of the drugs of choice. <laughs> So what should not be used is a cephalosporins. Ah, cephalosporins do not cover enterococcus in their activity. Their in vitro spectrum does not have uh, enterococcus. Okay. The drug of choice for enterococcus, if it's a UTI, lower UTI is ampicillin gentamicin. But if it's a intra-abdominal infection or a bloodstream infection, then you go with vancomycin, imipenem, or piptaz. Okay. Drug of choice remains vancomycin. Even imipenem has coverage. It covers faecalis, does not cover PCM. Okay, so you have to remember. But no cephalosporins cover enterococcus. Okay, quickly. Patient has been diagnosed with complicated skin soft tissue infection caused by staph aureus, which is sensitive to methicillin. Which of the drugs should be avoided? It's an MSSA, methicillin sensitive staph aureus. What will you avoid? What will you avoid? Not give. Yeah. Anybody? Mm. Sorry, Vanco I heard vancomycin. Yes, Vanco. Vanco. yes, the answer is vancomycin. Absolutely right. So this is a strange thing in vancomycin that for a sensitive staff, it's a bad drug. But for a resistant staff, which is an MRS, it's a drug of choice. Okay. For sensitive staff, cephalexine, amoxicillin, ampicillin is a drug of choice. Even if it's an endocarditis, you don't give vancomycin for an MSSA. You only reserve it for MRS. Okay, so we have okay, to. Uncle, remember. just a minute. Uncle, just a minute. Yeah. Uh, some students were saying oxacillin. Will you please uh, clarify about oxacillin? Okay, oxacillin is also methicillin sensitive staph or yes, you can give oxacillin, cloxacillin, but in India, it's very difficult to get oxa, cloxa alone. You usually get a combination of MP plus uh, amoxy plus cloxacillin. But I don't recommend giving two. If it's a simple uh, uh, enterococcus, even your ampicillin will do well. Okay. Usually we use reserve oxacillin, methicillin for laboratory purposes because they will tell me whether it's an MSS or an MRS. For clinical purposes, ampicillin is good enough. Uh, for milder infections, uh, you don't need to go beyond that. And remember, no beta lactam covers MRSA. Now, however, there are two 
in the fifth generation cephalosporins, which cover MRSA, but generally there are no beta. What is beta lactam? PCMC, penicillin, cephalosporin, monobactam, carbapenems. They generally do not cover MRSA. So the point here to remember is, even if your patient is in sepsis, central line infection, but it is MSSA, don't give vancomycin. Okay, so that's the point here. Okay, which of the following antibiotics only covers gram negatives? Only covers gram negatives. Yeah, as it as it is So some said as to anon, some said colistin, some said amicacin. Okay. For those who said amicacin, you are approximately right because the answer is that this is the problem with amicacin. It only covers staph among gram positive. That is the only gram positive it covers. Okay, so the correct answer is estriumem and cholestin. They have no gram positive cover. So usually we make this mistake, but amicacin does have a good gram positive cover in the staph aureus. Okay, drugs which only cover gram positives are oxaslin, vanco, ticoplanin, linezolid. They only cover gram positives. Okay, so you have to know if sometimes the patient is only gram positive, don't give a gram negative cover just simply because what if, okay, what if is never a good, good science. Okay, last question. Which of the following antibiotics does not cover anaerobes? Absolutely right. So, you know, it sometimes pains me to see if the patient is on IMI or Mero or Peptazo, why add Metrogil? Why add Clindamycin? They have a very good anaerobic coverage. And which is the most common anaerobe we are worried about? B. fragilis. B. fragilis is covered very well by uh, your carbapenems and Peptazo. So it's not a birthright to give every surgical patient MP Metrogenta. One for gram positive, one for gram negative, one for anaerobe. So if your patient is on carbapenem or piptazo, he is very well covered for anaerobes. Unless it's a deep-seated abscess, you don't need to give additional anaerobic coverage. Okay, cephalosporins have poor anaerobic coverage. That's why we have to add uh, this to cover them. Okay, when carbapenems and piptazo are used, there's no need for additional anaerobic. Okay, fine. So I guess now we are pretty much warmed up. So we have cleared that in the first five minutes. Let's go into the boring theory and let's try to keep it more lively. So uh, most of the antibiotics, we classify them as per the mechanism of action. So if you see, based upon their meta inhibitors of metabolism, we have sulfonamides. Cell wall synthesis is our one of the major mechanisms of action. And we have beta lectins and vancomycin. Inhibitors of protein synthesis, we have tetracyclines, aminoglycosides, and macrolides mainly. And nucleic acid synthesis inhibitors are fluoroquinones. Your cholestin and R, they are cell membrane. They act on the cell membrane. They are like detergents. Okay, They clear the cell membrane and then the antibiotics can enter. So these are essentially the major mechanisms of action. Now, please remember uh, the drugs which act on nucleic acid synthesis and cell wall, they are bactericidal. Okay? They kill the bacteria. They don't inhibit the growth. Okay. Whereas drugs which act on the protein synthesis are bacteriostatic, except aminoglycosides. Aminoglycosides although act on protein synthesis, but they are still cidal. Now, normally cidal and static is a theoretical debate. This makes much more sense when your patient is neutropenic or is immunocompromised. In such cases, we would like to give cidal drugs because if you give a static drug, then they inhibit the bacteria, but you do not have macrophages to clear them off. So there is chances of reinfection. So if you have a neutropenic or an immunocompromised patient and it's a sick patient, better to give more cidal drugs than static drugs. Other than that, in a normally immunocompetent patient, it does not make much clinical difference with a static or a cidal. Okay. Uh, for example, if you know uh, Taiji cycline, again, a very broad spectrum drug, but we normally say avoid in a very sick patient. And now there is a black box warming for Taiji cycline to be used in VAP patients alone. One of the reasons is also it is static and also it's because it does not have enough penetration in the bloodstream. So please remember that even the mechanism of action may have some implications on the clinics. So whatever I'm going to tell I would like to link it to the clinics and not just plain simple pharmacology, which anyways we will forget the next day. What are the most common penicillins? So again, there is nothing to, I can't explain. This is just, we have to remember. Uh, so 
this is the normally penicillin cephalosporin carbapenem and gonobactams they are common beta lactams and uh, other antibiotics which inhibit cell wall are vancomycin okay now important thing to remember is uh, why they are called beta lactams they have this four membered beta lactam ring in them and that is from where the name has come beta lactamases which means the enzymes which break this beta lactam ring okay and we have whole classical esbl mc carbapenemases they are all beta lactamases because they break the beta lactam ring okay. so all beta lactam antibiotics acts on the same penicillin binding protein inhibit the cell wall synthesis and once the cell wall goes the bacteria is no longer viable okay that's the mechanism of action okay now uh, i won't go through these slides i will pass on these slides after my talk so you can keep them as a ready reference but what i have tried to do in next 5 6 slides is one single summary slides for the spectrum and for their indications normally that they are used for example look at mp amoxy or even amoxiclav what is the sp spectrum gpc is gram positive cocci except mrsa plus enterobacteriaceae plus anaerobes and normally where you use them for uncomplicated community acquired infections like urti lrti skin soft tissue uti ngi so i have found these slides to be useful to me because sometimes you forget let me just quickly remember what is the spectra what are the normal things they cover so these slides will help you to quickly remember what is the spectrum of the major drugs and what are the common infections that we use them for some of the mnemonics gpc is gram positive cocci gnb is gram negative bacilli eb is enterobacteriaceae nf is non fermenters okay so just for your reference when you keep them so i will not go through these slides because this is thoda sa ratification is there we have to remember them okay what is bl blis now this is an interesting class because all your new drug research is happening in this so if you have seen recently you have ceftolozone tazobactam new drug launched by merck or ceftazidime mevibactam launched by uh, pfizer so what is a funda so there are three things beta lactam beta lactamase and beta lactamase inhibitor so there are enzymes which break the beta lactam ring and uh, antibiot and the bacteria becomes resistant those are enzymes called beta lactamases in order to save my beta lactam we developed beta lactamase inhibitors they are like suicide inhibitors their only role is to protect the antibiotic which is beta lactam from the beta lactamase enzyme classically we had three beta lactamase inhibitor uh selvactam tazobactam clavulanic acid okay and now we have multiple combination you know peptazo uh, ticarclav amoxiclav and tiselvactam that was the logic now there are many new bl blis which are being launched as i said two of them are recently launched in india but globally many have launched there is uh, imipenem relibactam now so there are three more new beta lactamase inhibitors okay relibactam avibactam and vaborbactam how they are different they even cover kpcs or carbapenemases to some extent so bl bli class has become very important because of their spectrum and new drugs similarly cephalosporins again spectrum and positioning you can go through uh, first generation please do not go more than first or second generation for surgical profile access because all we have to cover is staph aureus s for skin s for staph if you are cutting the skin you have to cover for staph only if you are entering the uh, large bowel then you have to give for anaerobic coverage okay and i will talk about more such factors tomorrow today i am sticking to basics so this slide will help you to find out that which cephalosporin should be used for what okay do not use your third and fourth generation cephal third generation cephalosporin especially oral ones for simple diarrhea or because i have seen pediatricians using cefexim for diarrhea or for uh, urti try first or second generation cephalosporin okay fluoroquinolones one class of drugs abused in india to the hilt there is a joke that if indians get their urine tested there will be traces of fluoroquinolones okay in australia you cannot buy ciprofloxacin also over the counter okay so please avoid giving broad spectrum fluoroquinolone levofloxacin hame lagta hai badi choti dawai hai levofloxacin has the same spectrum as carbapenem so don't give levofloxacin for simple lower uti or an upper uti simple cough cough cold levomac is one of the largest selling drugs in india 
avoid fluoroquinolone. Even if you have to give, give specific fluoroquinolones. For GI, give Oflox, Norflox. They penetrate mainly into the GI or GU. Don't give uh, levofloxacin uh, for even small infections. Okay, I think according to me, it's a crime to give levofloxacin unless it's a pneumonia. Okay, and that also give right dose. Right dose for levofloxacin is 750 mg single shot, not 250 mg TDS 500 mg BD. And I will talk about this tomorrow in my PKPD class. Aminoglycosides, one class of drug which fortunately in India is still, uh, you know, saved from much resistance. But save these drugs. These are very good drugs to be combined with a beta-lactam in a sepsis patient or in a pyelonephritis because they have a very good penetration in the urine. Okay. They, they don't solve much purpose in an intra-abdominal infection or for a pneumonia. I will save my drugs for uh, skin soft tissue infection, bed sores, uh, and don't give aminoglycosides or fluoroquinolones alone in a sick patient. Okay, if the patient is in sepsis, always add a beta lectin to an aminoglycoside or a fluoroquinolone. Macrolides, again, one class rapidly being misused. Every patient of typhoid is put on macrolide. But please, macrolide is a reserve drug for typhoid. Try your third generation cephalosporin, second generation cephalosporin first. Okay, so please try to use macrolides also sparingly because macrolide resistance is also uh, skyrocketing in India. Some miscellaneous drugs, clindamycin, again, it's a reserve drug for anaerobes, good drug for uh, diabetic foot infection, because in diabetic foot, you have gram-positive bacteria and anaerobes. You just have to cover two. Unless it's a uh, uh, gangrene, you don't need to cover gram-negatives usually, okay? Metronidazole, I have told, only covers gram, uh, only covers anaerobes, no other thing. Vancomycin, ticoplanin, linozolate, only cover uh, gram positive and do not use these drugs for sensitive staph. Only give them for MRSA or enterococcus. Remember, linozolate given more than 14 days uh, has a bone marrow poisoning. Okay, remember, it can lead to anemias. Tigecycline, again, very strange drug, covers almost everything. It's the broadest spectrum drug available, covers everything except pseudomonas. Okay, again, tigecycline, do not use it for bloodstream infections or pneumonias. There is a black box warning. You only use if you have to combine with cholestin, your carbapenems are not working, then you can use a tidy cycle. Cholestin, we all know, is the reserve drug. Okay, some very quickly, some must remember points. Drugs which don't work for enterococcus, cephalosporins, aminoglycosides, fluoroquinolones. Drug of choice for enterococcus, MP plus Genta or vancomycin plus Genta or Piptazo or Imipenem. Ceftriaxone and levofloxacin are not small antibiotics to be used for every inpatient. They cause maximum ecological damage, which means a collateral damage that they cause resistance because they lead to ESBLs, MRSA lot. I think one of the reasons India has such high resistance rates in the community is because we use third generation cephalosporins and fluoroquinolones like water. Okay. Cephoroxime not to be used for salmonella. Many times in culture report, it shows cephoroxime is sensitive, but avoid. It does not penetrate into the peer's patches where uh, there is your typhoid bacteria. Nelidixic acid is a good marker for resistance to fluoroquinolone. So if you see nelidixic acid resistant in the culture report, do not use other fluoroquinolones. Or even if you have to use, give them in high dose possible. Okay. So remember, microbiology, it's impossible to practice uh, critical care without knowledge of microbiology. So some of microbiology, we all have to know. In fluoroquinolones, best for gram negatives are ciprofloxacin, levofloxacin, cipro more than nor and oflox. Best for gram positive is moxifloxacin, gemifloxacin. We call them respiratory fluoroquinolones also because they are mainly covers your atypicals uh, and your uh, gram positives, mainly streptococcus pneumonia. Don't use fluoroquinolones for staph and strepto. Now, this is, again, my humble request. It only takes a single mutation for staph and strepto to become resistant to fluoroquinolone. So if it's a shave rash, I see people for uh, normal uh, shave rash use fluoroquinolones. Please avoid them. Okay, Fluoroquinolones have to be used very sparingly. MP, amoxy, amoxyclef, first generation cephalosporins, they don't cover enterobacteriaceae except E. coli. So if you want to cover Klebsiella, you can't use first or a second generation, use third generation. If staph is resistant to erythromycin, it will be resistant to clindamycin also, because sometimes we have to use clindamycin for diabetic food, so you have to remember this. 
This we have covered drugs which only cover gram negatives, drugs which only cover gram positives. We have covered that. If staph is resistant to oxacillin, it is MRSA. It is resistant to all beta lactams. And I will cover this tomorrow again. This is the important markers in a culture report. At two in the night, you will not have the microbiologist to tell you how to interpret. We all should know how to interpret a culture report. I have covered this. Don't use vancomycin for sensitive staph and strepto. If E. coli Klebsiella is resistant to any third generation cephalosporin, think about ESPLs. It could be an ESPL. Okay, remember. Okay, and very quickly, uh, this is not cast in stone. This is based upon my experience and what I have uh, gathered. Common things. So we are not to use antibiotics liberally. Most upper respiratory tract infections are viral. It takes seven days to cure common cold with antibiotics. It takes one week with antibiotics. Okay, so remember, most diarrheas in children are rotavirus diarrheas. You don't need antibiotics. Many superficial skin infections apply topical antibiotics even if you have, but not systemic. Surgical prophylaxis for clean cases is not needed. Okay, now the antibiotics in red, which I have written, should be avoided because they cause collateral. So what I have written, URTI, common causes, and which drugs you can use and which to avoid. Okay, so like strep pneumonia, H. influenzae, morexella are common causes of upper respiratory tract infection. You can use amoxy, amoxiclav, or emacrolide. Avoid cephalosporins, avoid chloroquine. Gastrointestinal infections. Normally, again, antibiotics are not indicated for all cases of diarrhea and dysentery. Okay, uh, again, amoxy, use a narrow spectrum fluoroquinolone. Uh, and avoid the drugs in red. Community acquired pneumonia. Amoxy is good enough. Amoxy plus macrolide, amoxy clav. Do not go to uh, cephalosporins or fluoroquinolones as your first choice. Hospital acquired pneumonia, ventilator associated pneumonia. Again, you have bigger pathogens, ESBL, pseudo acinito. Which drug to choose? Although I've written four names, depend upon your hospital antibiogram. Whatever is more sensitive in your hospital antibiogram, I think you should use that. And I will cover hospital antibiograms tomorrow, how to make a protocol. Community acquired UTI, again, one of the most common infections in India. Remember, there are only two drugs which work against ESBLs and are oral. Nitrofurantoin and phosphomycin. Very valuable drugs for UTI, which is an ESBL. But if it's a non-ESBL UTI, you can give your uh, MPM oxy, norflox, oflox. Okay. Remember, don't use nitrofurantoin for pyelonephritis. It does not enter the kidney. It is a urinary antiseptic kind of a drug. So only use it for lower UTI for an ESPL. Otherwise, phosphomycin is a very good option for a lower or a upper UTI if it is caused by an ESPL. Okay. Again, this UTI, community acquired UTI is one infection where lots of antibiotics are misused. So please remember that. And whenever we have a hospital acquired or a nosobomal infection, Always rely on your hospital antibiogram. Last six months data. Anything which has sensitivity more than 60-70% should be your empirical drug of choice. Bloodstream infection. Usually we have Salmonella, Staph aureus, E. coli. Again, avoid uh, azithromycin as your drug of first choice. And nosocomial will depend upon, usually it's carbapenem, spiptes, or cephosalbectum. But again, depend upon your uh, uh, hospital antibiogram. If the hospital antibiogram for any drug whose resistance is more than 40%, normally in the world we say 20% resistance. Any drug whose resistance is more than 20% should not be used as empirical. Unfortunately, in India, we don't have that luxury. Agar hum kahenge ki 80% se sensitivity wali drug hi hum use karenge, you will use cholestine in every patient. But we can't do that. So in India, we say a drug whose sensitivity is less than maybe 60-65% in your hospital antibiogram, avoid that in as empiric therapy in very sick patients. Because we have to have some, at least some benchmark to decide that we go for evidence-based medicine. Skin soft tissue infections, again, as I said, avoid fluoroquinolones. Most of them are staph aureus. So give amoxy, MP, oxacillin, uh, or maybe a clindamycin if there is an anaerobe. Okay, nosocomial skin soft tissue, acinetobacter is there in bed sores. But again, it will depend upon what is growing in the hospital culture. Okay. Right. So I'll just stop here because this is where I stop on the basics of antibiotics. I have another basics of antifungals, but I know we have just one minute left. 
so ma'am maybe i can cover basics of antifungals tomorrow because i have much more liberal time tomorrow or uh, if whatever you say or if you have any questions on antibiotics i'm happy to answer why don't you continue how long will you take 5 minutes 10 minutes 10 minutes ma'am kal kar de kara de kar dijiye the next speakers are here they say kara dijiye aap kar lijiye okay very quickly antifungal agents two most common what are our common fungal infections two most common are candida and aspergillus and the less common are histoplasma zygo and everything but i'll mainly focus on candida and aspergillus which form more than 90% of our invasive fungal infections i love this slide because this tells me the antifungal strategy what is prophylaxis prophylaxis is fear driven only there is high risk okay a patient with uh, who's going for allogenic transplant is at high risk of fungal infection so that's what we say fear driven therapy what is empiric fever driven therapy not only patient has high risk but has fever and normally in invasive fungal infections that's the only symptom or sign that you have what is evidence driven there is some evidence either radiological or serological and radiological makes more sense in aspergillus you have uh, a ct scan appearance or in serological if you have a galactomannan positive and finally we have gold standard diagnosis driven which is targeted therapy if culture is positive okay uh, i know i don't have the liberty to go into the details of fungal infection but maybe at some later date i would love to talk about these strategies individually in both eutropenic and non eutropenic patients uh, desirable features of an antifungal drug fungicidal broad spectrum low toxicity should have both oral and iv should be inexpensive of course we want everything what are the common options so drugs which act so which are one of the older drugs which are polyenes m4b acts on the cell membrane then we have drugs which act on cytoplasm all the azoles and then drugs which acts on cell wall which have achinocandins okay polyenes and achinocandins are fungicidal drugs whereas azoles are fungistatic that's what we have to remember okay a common uh, so this is an important uh, point to remember among candida there is candida albicans and candida non albicans now the non albicans candida are tropicalis paracelsus glabrata cruzii and now in india is candida oris that's a very common candida in india please remember fluconazole only covers candida albicans tropicalis and little bit of paracelsus okay boriconazole does cover uh, cruzii and other but again there is cross resistance in many of the azoles amphotericin b remains your broadest spectrum uh, drug even till date but resistance is on the rise and achinocandins casco anidul and mecafungin are your drug of choice especially for candida non albicans so from this slide if i have to take some message my drug of choice for candida albicans is fluconazole my drug of choice for candida non albicans in a sick patient is achinocandin if patient cannot afford a kinocandin then i can give amphotericin b if the patient is non neutropenic normally in a non neutropenic patient you should not give vori or buza these are drugs are mainly for the neutropenic patients and i'll give them more for aspergillus okay if it's a non neutropenic patient in icu it's usually fluconazole or a kinocandin and if patient cannot afford then amphotericin b okay so that's what even most of your guidelines also say amphotericin b still is the broader spectrum uh, it's a drug of choice for mucor uh, e- either alone or in combination with naposaconazole if you give continuous infusion with a slime tea loading you can reduce the nephrotoxicity but remember now even uh, candida oris has showing resistance to amphotericin and among aspergillus niger and tereus are becoming resistant so there are holes in spectrum of amphotericin lipid is just less nephrotoxic spectrum remains the same okay fluconazole narrow spectrum please remember if you are using fluconazole for a sick patient the loading dose has to be 800 mg followed by 400 mg bd don't give 200 mg bd for an icu sick patient if you are giving fluconazole it's very important to give high dose in sick patients for fluconazole do not give fluconazole for candida glabrata or cruzii okay this is your drug for albicans tropicalis and to some extent paracelsus etraconazole very good drug it is marred by its gi intolerability and again a better drug for molds rather than candida 
Voriconazole. Voriconazole is a valuable drug for neutropenic patients. I will not use voriconazole for my non-neutropenic patients in ICU. If my flu is not working, don't shift to vori, then shift to okinocandines. Vori is my drug of choice for empirical therapy in aspergillus patient, or if I have to de-escalate from an echinocandine. That's where you will use a voriconazole. IV voriconazole is nephrotoxic. Please remember, okay, because there is a cyclodextrin molecule in that. Another problem with voriconazole is lots of drug interactions with voriconazole, especially in a cancer patient. And plus, now there are blood levels. We say uh, we have to do uh, blood levels for voriconazole because there is a lot of inter-individual variation in this drug. Okay. Posaconazole, very good drug, again, for neutropenic patients. It's a drug of choice now for profile axis in AML patients, in allogenic transplant patients. That's one use of this drug. Second use of this drug is either alone or in combination with M4 for mucor. Okay, now I think other uh, uh, only solution was there. Now I think tablets are also available and I think IV posaconazole will also become available if it has not become available already. It has, it has less drug interactions than other zones. Caspo, Mika, and Anubula fungin are like three sisters. There's not much difference in their spectrum. Caspo has been used the maximum. Therefore, there is some resistance to it, especially in paracellosis. Remember, no okinocandin uh, travels to uh, urine, CNS, or eyes. If you have a urine infection, uh, candiduria, which is leading to uh, candidemia, avoid giving okinocandins. Avoid them in CNS or an eye infections. They are very good drug for bloodstream or other uh, candida infections. Okay, usually a kind of candidates we need a loading dose, and they are drug of choice for candida non albicans. The biggest advantage of a kind of candidates is minimum drug interactions and almost uh, no nephrotoxicity. Okay, for anadula fungin there is no hepatotoxicity also. Okay, so this is what you have to remember. Last three slides, this I'll just give you because this is a snapshot. Comparison of different antifungal drugs, their mechanism, formulation, renal hepatic, CSF penetration, and urine. So these slides you can keep handy as a ready record. And this is the in vitro activity of different antifungals. Uh, again, you can remember which drug covers what. Generally remember, flu is my drug for albicans and tropicalis. Akinocandins are my drug for candida non-albicans. Amphotericin B is my drug for mucor and aspergillus. Voriconazole is my drug for aspergillus. Okay, this is how I have remembered these drugs. And finally, these are some of the dosing recommendations for these antifungals. I know I have just breezed through antifungals because of the lack of time. If you have any questions or you want to go in detail, maybe tomorrow we can go into detail of this. Okay. And I love this slide. Please keep this slide. It took me seven to eight hours to make this slide. So just keep it different drugs. Which drug is a drug of choice, first choice, second choice, third choice in different types of indications in profile axis, in empiric, in targeted. Okay, I'll just uh, uh, keep this slight on while I stop talking now. Ma'am, over to you.